Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. and Welcome to the episode number 12 of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial, we're gonna continue, or we're gonna finish the implementation of our new structure, our new plugin architecture by reactivating all the methods that we had before. So right now we're missing the settings links inside our plugin page, then the uh, hooks for the activation and the deactivation method. So let's take care of those super quickly. First, we can create, as I said, by following the logic of the previous video, we can create a new file simply called uh, settings or settings links or plugin links or however you want. I like to call it settings links.php. I'm going to call it here. I'm going to duplicate deactivate method here. I'm going to just paste it because I have the same exact structure. I'm going to call these settings links. And here I'm gonna create a public function that is not static called register. And inside the register, I'm gonna use the same method that I had before. So first let's create a public function called settings link that we had before. And then inside these, we're gonna get the full array of links. And as usual, let's copy paste from the previous lesson what we did for the settings links. There you go. We have our settings links new attribute with the URL to our Alicat plugin administration page. We're returning this link. And here we can add the filter that we had before as well. So if you remember a couple of lessons ago, I showed you how to uh, dynamically store the uh, plugin base name of our plugin inside a public variable inside the class, and then how to dynamically call it here without concatenating anything and using the double quotes because the double quotes in PHP, they escape a variable and my text editor, Sublime Text, recognizes that this is a variable PHP that it's getting escaped. So here, uh, we cannot use this anymore. Or I mean, we could use this, but let's not use it because also in this case, I want to declare a constant variable in uh, my entire plugin structure that I can use over and over again without redeclaring it every time uh, inside uh, every single class that I need to use. So let's go back inside our alicat plugin.php and here as well, let's Let's simply duplicate this line and let's call these, I like to define uh, these constants, just simply plugin, not plugin name or plugin ID or whatever. I just call it plugins, really straightforward. And here we can use the built-in method of WordPress called plugin base name that we were using before. So right now we have this plugin constant that we can dynamically call here. Unfortunately, the constants are not recognized by WordPress. We could potentially store the constants inside a construct if you want to do it. So for example, we can declare a public function construct. And here we can say that dollar this plugin it's equal to the plugin constant. And as usual, as we had before, we can declare a protected variable called plugin if we want. And there you go. Just pretty straightforward, pretty simple. But of course, if you don't like all these extra stuff that are really not necessary, just in order to use the double quotes, you can simply remove everything. And then instead of the double quotes, use the standard concatenation and call the plugin constant, like either or both, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Let's try both methods. So let's try this one that it's more Mm, extensive, like in terms of lines of code, but whatever. And of course, if we go back in our WordPress backend and we refresh, nothing happens because we didn't actually uh, link these new settings links class inside our initialization method. So let's do it right away here. Base, instead of in queue, we're going to call the settings links class. Let's save it. Go back here. Refresh. Oops, sorry. I forgot. Comma. Save it, refresh. And here we have the settings links that goes directly in our settings page or our administration page. Pretty straightforward. And as I said, here we can uh, simulate these other approach by simply having the concatenation with the plugin constant that we declare. Of course, it's still here. Everything works. Uh, nothing is broken. Either or both approach, it's, it's okay. Like this is... I don't know. I kind of like the fact that I don't need to use a concatenation here. And I kind of like the fact that I have these uh, 
in initialization. I know that someone could say this is a waste of bytes or a waste of bits. We're storing this variable into a variable that we don't use or we don't actually need. We already have the constant, but I kind of like this structure. I don't know, it's, it's more readable for me. So it's totally up to you. You can decide what to do. Let's continue by triggering the activation and the deactivation method. But in this case, unfortunately, we cannot follow this logic by uh, means initializing a class dynamically here because WordPress, um, the activation and deactivation hooks that we saw in previous lessons, they need to be outside any type of class in order for the uh, plugin triggering to work properly. They cannot be inside a class that gets initialized after it, otherwise they won't be triggered properly. So. Let's go back in our Alicat plugin, and I swear this is the last thing that we add inside this, but the thing that we need to do is to define the activation and deactivation hook and use it to actually trigger procedural methods that will call those classes. So it's kind of crappy and it's kind of like forced, but that's how WordPress works and that's how WordPress needs you to uh, trigger those methods, otherwise they won't work properly. So let's do just these couple of things. So the register the activation hook and let's specify I want to register the activation hook on this file and we can call a procedural function called activate alicad plugin here let's duplicate and deactivate deactivation hook deactivate alicat plugin and here we can specify those procedural function called activate alicat plugin we can call activate activate <laughs> pretty weird and then let's duplicate all this stuff and let's write the deactivate, deactivate alicat plugin and here deactivate, deactivate. Of course this won't work because we need to require those two methods. So we need to require those two classes, but because we're using auto load, we can say use ink base activate and then ink base deactivate. Let's save it. Let's go back in our WordPress backend. Let's refresh, deactivate, all good, activate, all good, perfect. We are properly calling those methods by using <laughs> this weird approach, but the problem is that, as I said, WordPress requires the registration, uh, the activation and deactivation hooks to be registered outside any class. We cannot declare inside a class, it needs to be completely procedural in order to properly work. And deactivate and the deactivate method usually are necessary to trigger some small methodologies. In our case, we're using to trigger the flush rewrite rules because we're gonna deal with custom post types and custom taxonomy and stuff like that. But also here with deactivate and deactivate, you could use them to declare some uh, specific options to populate or remove some uh, uh, placeholder stuff inside the database and stuff Stuff like that like it's totally up to you if you don't need to do anything on the activation or deactivation you can totally remove this stuff but by default I kind of like this approach and um, that's the structure that I like to use so let's write some comments to define better what I'm doing here we did it this is the structure that I like to use for my plugin and some, some of you will probably hate it, some of you will say it's wrong, but I use it many, many times and I love it. It's really well organized and I, I feel comfortable with this. And that's the main thing when you write something in PHP, especially when you need to write something really, really big that is gonna uh, take up a lot of time for you to build, you need to be comfortable. You need to like the structure, you need to like how it's set up and you need to feel at home with your own code. Perfect, now we properly set up our plugin in order for us to start to build everything we want to use and everything we want to make. So from next lesson, we're gonna start looking at all the requests that you guys asked me, like uh, dynamically generate custom post types, dynamically generate widgets, having um, Ajax sign up register method pop up, having, I don't know, a slider, a gallery plugin, a portfolio plugin, all this kind of stuff. We're
we're gonna generate everything one after another inside this plugin structure. So we're gonna, at the end of this series, we're gonna have one gigantic plugin that deals with many, many things of our WordPress installation and can generate a lot of things. And the cool thing is that all these sections, all these implementations that we're gonna do in our plugin are gonna be compartmentalized in separate classes. So if you need to uh, just use one single feature of this plugin, you can easily extract it and uh, create a separate plugin for it without using the entire suite of plugins or entire suite of features and functionalities of these gigantic plugin. You can ex easily extract a portion of code because it's not embedded, it's not uh, conversating, it's not chatting or requiring other things. Everything is pretty well separate and well split. So this is a structure that I really like and I hope you will enjoy it in this series of tutorial about how to build the plugins. It's going to be amazing. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find different ways and methods to support me, support my channel, and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.